Hello, lovely people. Welcome back to another video with me, Peter Rising. Okay, let's get into things. First, if you've not hit that subscribe button down below, why not? It's free, completely free, takes a second, helps to grow my channel so much. Please give it a click right now and hit that notifications bell so you never miss a video when I post one. You can also become a member of the channel, click the join button and see the different levels of membership that you can leverage. Okie dokie. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about uh, two very important subjects, one very relevant right now, uh, which is Microsoft 365 Copilot. Everyone's talking about it. And one of my favorite subjects as well, which is Microsoft Purview eDiscovery Premium. Now, it's going to be increasingly important for organizations who are adopting Copilot to be able to search for content that is relating to M365 Copilot, to be able to have control, visibility over that, the ability to delete those, uh, that content that matches those searches. How do you do that? It is possible. There are ways that you can do that. These methods have been around for a while, but now you can apply them to Copilot as well. So we're going to check those right out right now. Here it comes. Let's get started then with our quest to search for and delete Microsoft Copilot for Microsoft 365 data. You can see in this learn.microsoft.com article that there are many steps to go through. We'll go through them all. A little disclaimer before we get started though. This is not necessarily, well, it's not actually going to be a, a full end-to-end -end demonstration. I can't show you all of this because of limitations that I have. Uh, I don't have Copilot on my own demo tenant. The reason for this is that you cannot buy a monthly license and ain't no way I'm paying £296 just for a demo. Monthly licensing, if you please, Microsoft. Please. Okay. But I digress. That's my gripe out of the way. Let's set the scene a little bit. Let's read the opening paragraph of this article. What's it all about? Let's get to the good stuff. And you can use eDiscovery Premium, the only eDiscovery that is worth using, and the Microsoft Graph Explorer to search for and delete user prompts and Microsoft Copilot for Microsoft 365 responses in supported applications and services. This feature can help you find and remove sensitive information or inappropriate content included in Copilot activities. This search and deletion workflow can also help you respond to a data spillage incident when content containing confidential or malicious information is released through Copilot related activity. So this is very, very useful stuff that organizations who are adopting Copilot will need to know about. Absolutely. Okay, some prerequisites. What do we need to know? Before you search and delete Copilot data, uh, we need to know that to create an eDiscovery premium case and use collections to search for Copilot activity, you have to be a member of the eDiscovery manager role group in the Purview compliance portal. And to delete the Copilot data, you have to be assigned the search and purge role. This role is assigned to the data investigator and organization management role groups by default. So. We're going to need to know some things about assigning eDiscovery permissions. I've done eDiscovery videos before. I'll link to them in this video, but we'll also link to some of this learn content. The steps. We need to create a case in eDiscovery Premium. We need to create a collection estimate. And we've got some tips here on how we search for data sources for Copilot data. And we're going to a nice table here for this type of Copilot data, search this item class. So we've got Excel, Loop, uh, OneNote, Teams, etc., etc., etc. A few tips here for searching for Copilot data to help ensure the most comprehensive collection of data. Use the type condition and select the Copilot activity option when you build the search query for the collection estimate. 
we also recommend using a date range or several keywords to narrow the scope of the collection to items relevant to your search and delete investigation. Makes sense to me. Okay, let's take a look at it in action. Let's actually create an e-discovery case. Let's do our um, collection and uh, see where we get to with this. I've already done one, so I can show you uh, this one here, Copilot Data Search, after we've gone through the steps to create a case. It, the reason I've done this is it takes a while for results to appear sometimes, so I thought I'd have one ready to demo rather than having to pause the video and come back later. But uh, once you've got all your e-discovery permissions assigned that you need, go on and create a case. Let's just call this Copilot Data Search 2. Put in a good description and a docket number if you have a system uh, of numeric identification. You have to use the new case format now. I don't know why the classic one is still there. You can assign users to uh, the case if you want to and all your case settings. I'll not go into that because I've covered that in other videos. Uh, so creating a, a case quickly and easily there. We'll submit that and we'll have a fresh case ready to use. Okay, that's done. Right, here is our case, and we need to add some data sources, so let's quickly go in and put in some custodians. Custodians are basically users, so let's just search for some users for our case here. We'll just put in Christine Chapel. Uh, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Okay, and we'll leave it there. We've got a custodian added, that's fine. We can go in and we can add more if we need them. We can add a, a data location. Also, I'll put in a SharePoint site just to flesh this one out a little bit so you get the idea. If you've never seen any of my uh, e-discovery videos before, do check them out. They go into more detail on all this sort of stuff, adding in collections and uh, data sources and, uh, and whatnot. But there we go. Uh, that's good. So now, data sources created. We need to move on to collections, and we need to create a new collection. And we want uh, Copilot Data Search 2, good description, blah, blah, blah. Uh, select custodians. I'll just select all, but I could select them individually. Same with the non-custodial data sources. And I can add other locations as well. If I do exchange mailboxes, I can filter by all or exclude certain ones. Same with SharePoint sites. Let's leave that in just for the uh, for the sake of it. Go next. This is where the good stuff happens. Okay. Now, what you will note if we go back to this document is we have this table here, uh, and we can search for these item classes for Copilot data. How do we get these in? Right, if we go back to here, in our query builder, we uh, select a filter. And you might remember that it suggested using the filter of type. So we'll do equals any of, and we'll choose a value, and I'm gonna search for Copilot. And here we have Copilot interactions. Cool, let's apply that. What does that actually do though? So we are seeing, this in our query builder. And we can go on and add more filters there and subgroups and whatnot, but what does it actually look like? If we switch to the KQL editor, we see what we saw in the learn document. All of these item classes equal IPM, Skype Teams, Message Copilot Teams. We've got BizChat in there, we've got Excel, we've got Word, we've PowerPoint, Loop is there. So that's what we need, awesome stuff. Awesome stuff indeed. Now, it, you will recall that it recommended adding in keywords for the search as well. So do think about what you want to specifically search for when you are doing an e-discovery search, an e-discovery case. You should usually have uh, something in mind that you want to search for. That's, that's quite common in any sort of legal or investigation or internal investigation. So have that criteria in mind you will know best what it is you're looking for. So you'll need these to narrow it down to Copilot interactions, and you'll need your search criteria. Uh, and you can do that with the Query Builder or the KQL Editor. Look back at my previous eDiscovery videos for uh, some examples of that. I'll not go into that here. 
Let's click next. So there we go. We have got our collection ready to go. Uh, we can submit that collection now. Okay, so off that goes. A new collection was created and the collection progresses and once it's finished, you will be able to commit that collection to a review set. Um, that can take a little bit of time, but you can see here the name of the collection. You can see uh, when it ultimately does get committed to a review set, uh, it'll appear here the status of it, the query text, and if we expand that along, we can see all of that detail there, the runtime, the estimate status, and the preview status. Uh, if we give that a refresh, that's still in progress. So we'll not dwell on that. What we'll do here is we'll just switch to the one I created earlier. Okie dokie, here we go. Copilot data search number one. So, we can see that I have uh, data sources in here, as I did in the example that I just created. I have a collection, and I committed it to a review set, which I named Copilot Content. So if we go to Review Sets, we can see that Copilot Content right there. We can click on it, and we can open the review set. Now this is where my demo kind of falls flat on its face because I don't have Copilot licenses in my tenant, as I've already said. So it's not gonna find Copilot interactions in any of my users in my demo environment. I would need a full Copilot experience in order to show you that. So what you would see here is you would see any results that had been returned and you'd be able to go into them and see previews of them. You could annotate them, you could export them just as you could with a normal uh, e-discovery case. As we can see, it's because it's searched for uh, content uh, in my folder that contains chapters for one of my books, it's, it's returned that. Um, and I didn't put any keywords in, so it's, it's not had enough criteria to filter um, these away, and it's not got the Copilot license or the Copilot interactions to be able to return any results. So we sort of, we're done here. <laughs> that's, that's the extent of the demo. So you get the idea though, hopefully. And when I do figure out a way to take this further, I, I certainly will, I'll come back and, and, and do more. But the principles are the same. So. Um, I mean, you can search for and delete content with e-discovery cases right now. It doesn't have to be co-pilot content. It can be any sort of content that you find in your review sets. And if we go down here, we can see the steps that you need to complete to do that. So review and verify co-pilot data to delete. So you're looking at your review set um, and what, what has been returned. Filter out what you... Uh, what you don't need, so, uh, and then you can move on to the next step, which is crucial. You need to remove any holds and retention policies from the data sources that match the returned content. So what does this say if we drill down into it a bit more? Before you can delete Copilot data from a, a mailbox, you have to remove any hold or retention policy that is assigned to said target mailbox. If not, then the data you're trying to delete is retained. Use the list of mailboxes that contain the co-pilot data that you want to delete and determine if there's a hold or retention policy assigned to those mailboxes, then remove the hold or the retention policy. So there are some steps here for sure uh, to, to get to the next step where you can actually delete your co-pilot data. Okie doke. So step five, deleting the co-pilot data. Let's assume you've done everything you need to do to get to this point. Now you're ready to delete Copilot data from user mailboxes. Use the Microsoft Graph Explorer to perform the following three tasks. You need to get the ID of the eDiscovery Premium case that you created in step one. This is the case that contains the collection created in step two. Get the ID of the collection that you created and verify the search results in step three. The search query in this collection returns the copilot data to be deleted. And then number three, final step, delete the copilot data returned by the collection. For more information about using Graph Explorer, see here. We'll include this link for you. Right, 
Okay, so it, it even goes as far as to tell you how to do some of these steps. So, and there's an important note here, is to perform these three tasks in Graph Explorer, you may have to consent to the eDiscovery Read All and eDiscovery Read Write All permissions. For more information, see the consent to permissions section in Working with Graph Explorer. Yes, please, we'll have that as well. Getting the case ID, it gives you all the details you need here. Uh, go to developer.microsoft.com graph forward slash graph hyphen explorer. Sign into the Graph Explorer with an account. That's assigned the search and purge role in the Microsoft Purview Compliance Portal. I'm not going to do any of these steps. I could go in and delete some of that content that it returned in the eDiscovery case, but I think it would be a, a bit of a redundant demo because we've not got actually any co-pilot data to delete, but I may follow up and do a video on the actual deletion process in, in Graph and, uh, and or PowerShell. I'll be completely honest with you though, uh, I'm not prepared to do that right now because I haven't. Uh, I don't have a, a Windows environment ready to uh, log into PowerShell or anything like that and do it. So ugh, I'm being a bit lazy, but I will try and follow up and do that. But for now, we'll describe what you need to do, and, and, and this article is really, really great in terms of that. Okay, um, scroll through the response to locate the eDiscovery Premium case. Uh, use the display name property to identify the case. Copy the corresponding ID uh, and paste it into a text file. And you're going to use that ID in the next task to get the collection ID. So we've got our discovery. Um, what is it we've got there? We've got our, uh, our, our, uh, our ID. So next we need to get the eDiscovery search ID. So that was the case ID. This is the search ID. In Graph Explorer, run the get request to retrieve the ID for the collection that you created. And this is what you have to put in. Use the value of this URL um, in the address bar of the request query, where eDiscovery case ID is the case ID that you obtained in the previous step. Scroll through the response to locate the collection that contains the items that you want to delete. So use the display name property to identify the collection that you created in step three. In the response, the search query from the collection is displayed in the content query property. Items returned by this query are deleted in the next task. So you then copy the corresponding ID to a text file. You're going to use that ID in the next task to delete the copilot data. So you're getting the information you need from the graph. Uh, next, uh, there's a tip here as well. Let's not skip over that. Instead of using the previous procedure to obtain the search ID, you can open the case in the compliance portal. Open the case, navigate to the jobs tab, select the relevant collection, and under support information, you can find the job ID uh, displayed here is the same as the collection ID. Handy to know. Um, I got to admit, you can probably tell from my reluctance to uh, put time and effort into doing the PowerShell-y stuff that I'm I'm a GUI guy. I if I can avoid using anything that relates to code, I'll I'll do so. But hey, that's just me. I know there's people out there who love all that codey stuff. Right, delete copilot data or data if you prefer. Uh, in Graph Explorer, run the following post request to delete the items returned by the collection that you used in step two or created in step two. Use this value, this URL, graph Microsoft.com, blah, 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 eDiscovery case ID, eDiscovery search ID, purge the data. So there we go. Where the eDiscovery case ID and the search ID are the IDs you obtained in the previous steps. If the post is successful, an HTTP response code is displayed in a green banner stating that the request was accepted. So there we go. There is also the option to delete copilot data with PowerShell rather than the graph. Uh, now, PowerShell seems to be getting less and less appealing uh, out there in the big wide world, and everything seems to be moving towards graph. So um, I would say graph is probably going to be your first port of call. However, because Graph Explorer is not available in the US government cloud, you must use PowerShell to accomplish these tasks. So that's why it's included here. And you can also delete the copilot data using PowerShell. So, uh, and here's what you should do. On PowerShell, connect hyphen MG graph, scopes, eDiscovery, read, write, all, environment, US gov, invoke, MMG graph request, method, post, hyphen URI, blah, 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 blah. So follow all that and you'll um, 
get to where you need to be and you can uh, do the same sort of things in PowerShell. Step six, verify that the Copilot data is deleted after you post, after you run the post request to delete the Copilot data. The data is removed from the user's mailbox. There isn't any uh, visible notification or confirmation for the user that the data has been deleted. Deleted Copilot data is moved to the substrate holds folder, which is a hidden mailbox folder. Deleted Copilot data is stored there for at least one day and then permanently deleted the next time the timer job runs, typically between one to seven days. And once you're done, final step, after you verify the Copilot data is deleted, very important, reapply the holds and retention policies to user mailboxes that you removed in step four. Now, what I'm noticing here, as we go through the article, it's referring very much so to mailboxes rather than uh, other items. So um, that doesn't really tie into content that's stored in Excel or um, other items in this list. So certain things are going to be stored in Exchange, but um, are all of these? Maybe so, maybe so. Um, yeah, meetings. Okay, so, so maybe this is all just, although it's Excel, Loop, BizChat, OneNote, PowerPoint, Teams, it's it's obviously re relating at this time only to mailboxes by the looks of this. If any of you watching know any more about that, can confirm or deny, well, that would be handy. I think with Copilot being where it is right now, with it being, let's face it, still quite new. I mean, it feels like it's been around forever already, and it's been probably less than a year or close to a year. Um, it's not a surprise to see that there's still things to be added in here and uh, imagine where it's going to be a year from now. But that's my quick uh, overview of how you create an e-discovery case in order to search for and then delete using Graph and or PowerShell uh, Copilot data in Microsoft 365. And there you go, that's it. Uh, not the full demo I would like to have done because of certain limitations, uh, not having a co-pilot license in my own demo tenant. Uh, Microsoft, please give us monthly billing for M365 co-pilot. Why would you not do that? Honestly, but there you go. Um, so I hope you found that useful and I hope you can see how important this is going to be. The more Copilot is adopted in organizations, security and compliance teams are going to have to know how to search for uh, Copilot content and Purview eDiscovery is the tool to do so. So let me know if you've already checked this out, if you have a strategy for, for doing this in your organization, if you've had any challenges with it, and you can be sure that I will uh, figure out a way to um, get a bit further with this and do a, a more deep dive demo on that and do some of the PowerShell-y, graphy, codey stuff that you know I love, but <laughs> I don't hate it as much as I pretend, but um, half the battle is getting access to a Windows machine because I do everything on Mac. Right. Anyhow, let's wind up the video. Thanks as ever for your support, for your likes. Give me a great big thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video. And thanks for your subscribes. I always want more subscribers. I'm greedy. I want to grow the channel and reach a wider audience. Help me to do that by spreading the word about the channel. Uh, if you want more content, more perks, more exclusive members-only content, check out that join button and uh, become a member of my growing little community. Shout out to all my members who are are supporting me and I'm having some great interactions with come and join us and that's it um, let's sign off and I will see you on another video very very soon take care bye bye